You just informed me of this moments ago. Uh, I have long been impressed uh, by Alexei Navalny, by his courage, his determination. Um, the world watched in horror at an attempted assassination by poisoning several years ago, and that he chose to go back to Russia to continue to try and be uh, a voice for democracy, a voice for the Russian people, uh, was inspiring. Uh, that he may now have died in a Siberian prison camp above the Arctic Circle, uh, where he was being uh, detained under harsh conditions, uh, under largely politically motivated charges, um, is heartbreaking. Uh, I was with his wife uh, at a recent conference here in Europe, and um, she and her family seemed determined to continue to support Alexei. Um, so if this is true, if he has in fact uh, died in a Russian prison, this is just the latest victim of Putin's brutality, uh, his aggression against Ukraine, his repeated attacks on those both within and without Russia who try to be voices for democracy. And Senator, if this does prove confirmed, mm -hmm. How do you think this will shape the conversations this weekend here at the Munich Security Conference? It will reinforce the urgency um, of uh, North Atlantic uh, commitment to support freedom, uh, to work together to strengthen NATO and our uh, global partnerships with other countries that support freedom, and to stand up to authoritarians and autocrats. Uh, there is an election coming up in Russia that will not be free, will not be fair, will not include any robust discussion or debate of alternatives. Uh, and this is an opportunity for uh, those countries that are determined to support democracy and freedom to recommit ourselves to the cause of Ukraine and to recommit ourselves to the cause of democracy. Now, we're expecting to hear from the Ukrainian president, Mr. Zelensky, tomorrow. Um, this is coming at, he's coming at a time when he is looking for more support. And of course, he is very vocal about the aggression of Russia. I was just wondering, what is your message as a U.S. lawmaker? Because there is a lot of uncertainty still yes. about U.S. support for Ukraine. The Senate of the United States passed by a very strong bipartisan margin, margin uh, a $95 billion security supplemental bill that includes roughly $60 billion to support Ukraine. Most of that will be spent domestically in the United States on manufacturing of munitions in the United States that will then be shipped to Ukraine. I think it's critical that the United States continues its strong support. And I'm optimistic, let's say hopeful, uh, that the House of Representatives, after some back and forth, will find their way to also continue our essential support for Ukraine. Do you think that the only way for us to see the House approving this bill will be through a discharge petition? That's one possible route, a difficult route. Uh, I suspect you'll see a, a different version of this, uh, a bill that does include some border security provisions. Uh, it is striking that after months and months of bipartisan negotiations, uh, a group of senators came up with a strong uh, bipartisan border security proposal, which because the former president turned on it, they then abandoned it. So uh, this was a striking moment in American domestic politics. There is bipartisan strong support for Ukraine. The challenge is navigating the difficult processes of the Senate and the House to get that delivered in time. Ukraine is running out of munitions, um, and they are running out of time. And it's time for the United States to show where we stand. Now, the Vice President Kamala Harris is coming here also to address some concerns among NATO allies after some comments from the pre previous president. We're seeing the Congress essentially taking a long time, when you look at it, to p approve new support for Ukraine as well. Are you worried about the U.S. reputation in uh, the global stage? Can the U.S. still play a critical role when it comes to the global security order? The United States does play a critical role in the global security order. Our uh, work against the Houthis to ensure freedom of navigation, uh, our work in the Indo-Pacific uh, to ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific, our work in partnership with more than 50 other countries to support Ukraine continues. Uh, and part of why I'm at this 60th annual Munich Security Conference is to continue strong bipartisan participation from Congress. Vice President Harris last year uh, gave a very stirring address uh, calling out Russian war crimes, uh, Russia's actions uh, inside Ukraine that are a tantamount to genocide, that are an attack not just on the Ukrainian people, but on the very concept of uh, the rule of law and the ordered liberty of the West uh, after the Second World War. I expect her this year to be comparably reassuring to our NATO partners and allies about our commitment to continue our central role. But can they actually trust the United States, sir? 
part of the point of elections is they have consequences. Uh, I am a co-chair of the Biden-Harris yes. 2024 election campaign, and part of why I am working so hard is that I'm certain that the future of the United States and our role in Europe and the world uh, will turn in no small part on who we elect as our next president. I would like to also get your thoughts on uh, the U.S. relationship with China. And we're expecting a bilateral here between Secretary of Lincoln and uh, the Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs. I was just wondering, in your mind, what is next for this relationship? There's been significant progress in de-escalation, um, in reducing the risk of an unintentional conflict. Um, frankly, China's facing some domestic headwinds in its economy and some global pushback on their debt trap diplomacy. Uh, and the ways in which their extractive uh, economic practices have uh, produced some pushback. So I think we're in a place where the United States and China are reassessing our relationship. We are very closely economically intertwined. Uh, we depend on each other. We are major trading partners, uh, and that continues. But we have significant concerns about the security consequences uh, of China's system of governance, uh, and it's fairly um, assertive, even aggressive at times, actions uh, in the cyber realm. Uh, in telecommunications uh, and in how they engage with other countries.